Travis Kelsey. He's already got the South Beach shades on. Patrick Mahomes, your reigning NFL MVP, arguably the face of the league. What's going through their minds right now? Well, first of all, when you saw Patrick Mahomes come out, you tried to hold back that smile, but you put all this hard work in to get here, and it's finally probably going to be surreal that they're there and it's kind of starting to really internalize, like, we made it. This is it. All that hard work we put in throughout the summer and the offseason is for this here. They put the kid out first. He leads that team out, right? He is their leader, and he could be, if he wins this Super Bowl, he could be the youngest player ever to be the league's MVP and win a Super Bowl. And, and uh, boy, what a bright future that guy has. And Andy Reid knows it, too. Andy's looking good in that Tommy Bahama. He's really, he's really what good. What do you think he's told his guys? He was through this process 15 years ago with the Philadelphia Eagles, who lost to Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots in Jacksonville in Super Bowl 39. What's he telling his guys? To enjoy it? Because he's a pretty easygoing dude. You know, he's very level-headed. He's not, he never gets too up or too down, Andy Reid. He goes through the up and down. And, you know, and I asked him, I was lucky enough to be there uh, two days ago interviewing Andy, and Dion interviewed uh, Patrick Mahomes. He had a good time, watch practice. And, you know, I asked him if he's changing anything from 15 years ago when they had a Super Bowl week. And he says, I'm not changing much. A couple of tweaks during practice. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. We get ready. They put all their game plan in already. Yeah. And uh, this week's all, all going to be reviewed. But what about this moment, guys? I mean, there's Miko Hardman, fine rookie returner. What an amazing season he had. Just brought more and more speed. You can see Frank Clark there in the white sunglasses as well. I mean, this is a moment to really cherish. No, no question. I mean, not many people get a chance to do this. And so you definitely, when you get there, you want to cherish and hold on to it. Well, Patrick Mahomes, we saw him already. He's going to be feeling the heat from that fantastic 49ers defensive front. So, Patrick, consider this practice as the media gets uber close. Irv goes one-on-one -on -one is with 1-5. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, okay, we're going to pull him. Okay, yeah, yeah, come on. We're going up here. We'll do it up here, buddy. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Yes, sir. Let me jump right in here on you, man. We got this camera on you, man. Listen, and, and get right into it. Pat, I, I, you, Dan Marino, Kurt Warner, our own very own Kurt Warner, the only quarterbacks to ever win an MVP and play in a Super Bowl in his first three years. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty surreal to be anywhere mentioned with those two guys. And uh, it's a tribute to my teammates, really, it is. And I got put in a great, uh, great situation and then try to maximize it every single day. Well, when you look back on last season, that, that game, that loss to the New England Patriots, man, well, how did that motivate you to get back to this game? Yeah, when you're that close, I mean, you want to you make sure you get back to next year. And so I think all the guys on the team, we just took it one day at a time, went through the process, uh, maximized every single day that we had, and uh, found a way to get here. Maximize the days you have definitely done that. Speaking of maximizing, you know, <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs, they moved up. Andy Reid moved up to get you in the draft. And now you have that franchise to its first Super Bowl in 50 years, and you could possibly give your head coach his first Super Bowl victory. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, we want to do it. We want to go out there. We want to play our best football. We know we're playing a great opponent, but we're going to try to win the game. And, uh, well, I mean, get one for Coach Reid, get one for Kansas City, and then get one for everybody. I'm always interested in the journey that it took to get to this place. And when you go back to that game in Denver and you're laid on the ground with that hurt knee, what were your thoughts then? And did you think about getting up from that to make it back here? Yeah, my thoughts then were all, were all bad. I'll just say that. Yeah. But, I mean, it truly is. God is amazing. I mean, he, he got me where I'm still healthy now this day, and I'm out here playing my best football with a lot of great people around me. This offense has been incredible. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, seven straight times they scored touchdowns. You guys scored touchdowns. I said, if I was on that defense, I'm just turning in my pads, man. Can this offense be stopped? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of weapons. I'll say that. I mean, and we've went out there and scored a lot of points, put a lot of good tape out there. So now it's about playing a really, really good defense and just playing the way we know how we can play. When you see this 49er defense, where do you see problems or, or where do you see you'll have your your biggest challenges? Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're good everywhere. I mean, that's what they they play. They play off each other. They know the scheme. They do it well. And so for us, it's about doing going through the process, uh, going through the game plan and just executing the plays when Coach Reed calls them. You got a cannon for an arm. But last week, you got a couple weeks ago, you got to use those legs, man. And you said you haven't had a run like that since 
high school. That was a run you made like that in high school. Do you remember that run? I do. It was in the playoffs, first round of playoffs. And it was uh, it was very similar where I was running on the fourth down, actually, and uh, I spent almost exactly the same and literally got in the end zone. I was just as tired that time as I was this time, I promise you. And it all ended up in the same place, and that's the end zone, man. Good luck with the game, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thanks yeah, for the thank time. You. Chris, that's the master of ceremonies right here. We just <laughs> talked to back to you, buddy. No question about it. And also the face of the NFL, one of 11 different Chiefs that has a podium. Boy, Andy shirt choice. Pretty solid, huh, Mooch? I like it. Yeah. Up next, the guy with the beard and the big screen. The look at him. He can't stop running. Hey, you look great. You look great. You wear this often? No. Huh? Not really. It's National Tight End Day. Nice. Yeah. Hey, energy, energy, energy. There is nothing telling you I was going to do that. And the ball was in the air before I did That's what I wanted you to do. You got to fight for your right to party. Uh, Travis Kelsey just set a record for tight ends with his fourth straight 1,000-yard receiving season. He balled and got the call. That's why we're going to send it down to Deion Sanders. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try and get some of that piece of that pie, too. You got swagger dripping all over you, man. Did you have anything to do with choosing the white for your team? Uh, you know what? I told, I told them we needed to have a clean outfit, man. And, and some, some told me Nike was going to do us right. So did you already pick out your game day ensemble? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I, I made sure I took care of that prior to the week coming down here so I could just think about football. How did you get all the swag in your family and the brother didn't get any? <laughs> oh, you talk to Jason, he'll show you some swagger too, man. He's, he's a confident individual who he is and all that. But I got it from, uh, I think the difference was he was a hockey player. I ended up turning into a basketball player by the time high school came around. So you just get a different swagger, a, a group, of, group of guys that you're hanging around. And, but uh, Jason's got some swagger to him. Don't let, it, don't let him surprise you. What did he tell you about preparing for this week? You know, I, I let him go ahead and enjoy that Pro Bowl with the with the family. He's got a beautiful little baby girl, Wyatt, in this world, and she's taking up all of his time. Mix that in with the Pro Bowl. I just left him alone. I'm gonna get some uh, some good tips and definitely the the, the blind sides, the things that uh, that you don't know that you're gonna encounter in the Super Bowl that you really can help. I want to figure out those so that I can have a have an edge going into the game. Your first Super Bowl and you in Miami. Can, can you top that? Man, you can't top that, baby. I love this city. I always have. South Florida, we're here, and we're ready to go, baby. First tight end, man. Four straight 1,000-yard 1,000 1, seasons, man. That's phenomenal. But there's another tight end on the other side of the field. Kittle. Tell me about him. George Kittle, man. I was just talking about his tenacity, how he runs routes, how he plays the game with a certain level of energy and enthusiasm. Man, you got to love it. And, and there's nothing... Uh, there's nothing that you dislike about that guy's game and just trying to trying to take it to the next level every single time he plays. What can you guys do different, man, to get out to a good start? The last couple games, you've been out to a, kind of a slow start. Yeah, we just got to gotta go out there with a purpose. Go out there with the, the right set of, state of mind and, and be able to get after these guys. It's a heck of a defense, and we know we're going to be in a battle. Has it set in yet that it's been 50 years, man, and you're really here? Man. It's been 50 years for the city. It's been seven for me. I, the seven I had was long enough. I can only imagine what this would mean for the city when we bring it back. Are you worried about your young quarterback on this stage at all? No, come on. It's Showtime Mahomes, baby. You know he's <laughs> ready for it. And I know you are, too. Back to you guys. All right, Prime, thank you. Uh, this is from Judy Batista. Butch, did you pick out his outfit this week? No, I did not. Look at that. You're not taking responsibility for that? I see the shirt, but what pants is he wearing? What is it? Khakis. Khakis. Yeah. I love it. It's from the uh, Jim Glorious. Harbaugh collection, I think. Uh, we'll hear from Andy in a bit. And, of course, you combine the coach's looks with the Chiefs fandom, and you get this from Modern Family star Eric Stone Street. Oh. Why am I a Kansas City Chiefs fan? Well, when I was just a little guy in Kansas City, Kansas, Joe Delaney signed this card for me at Indian Springs Shopping Center. And then Jack Rudden came to my fifth grade class. Then I got season tickets from my Uncle Glenn. And then my dad bought me season tickets in the corner of the end zone. And I started following players like Duran Cherry, Albert Lewis, Kevin Ross, Lloyd Burris, Dino Hackett, Tracy Simeon, Neil Smith, Derek Thomas, Barry Word, Christian Okoya, John Off, Dave Zott, Tim Grunhardt, Irv Eatman. But why am I still a Kansas City Chiefs fan? Well. I think that's pretty obvious. 